So a couple things that people have asked uh, me about, it, this is a good time to show. Uh, the first one I'll show you because this reminded me of it is uh, the super match, if you've never seen that before. Uh, and we'll actually fire one up here. So like when conditions are as bad as they are right now um, and everything's wet, your, your chances are unless you've been gathering tinder, like I have some in a waxed haversack, I could use that. Uh, and that's got, you know, birch bark chalk. I got all kinds of stuff in there. Uh, which is, a, is kind of a key takeaway. I always carry a, some sort of tinder bag that I can hook to my belt, you know, so as soon as I hit the wood line, even if I'm walking around uh, anywhere, if I see dry tinder, it's a habit of mine. I put it in my pocket and then, you know, by the time I get home every night, I've got pockets full, you know, and if you walk into my laundry room, like on the way to the garage, my washing machine is covered with a big pile of tinder and every once in a while, I'll take that out in the garage and pack it away and bring it to class or something. But uh, um, yeah, so it's just a habit of mine. I'm always in that habit of gathering natural tinder. Of course, I take some sort of man-made emergency tinder for conditions just like this. Um, or when I don't have time or I'm not mobile anymore and I have to use what's within arm's reach, a lot of times you can't get to it. So I like to always gather natural tinder when I can and keep it dry. And uh, I like to use natural tinder anytime I can. Uh, but also at the same time, you know, I don't, uh, I don't count on that being what I'm going to have, so I always carry some sort of uh, some sort of treated cotton, and that's why I really like carrying a you know a pocket full of, of the uh, the first aid tinder packs. Open flame ignition sources for me, the usually the only time I'm going to use it is in conditions like this. It's kind of it's like when you really need that fire, uh, kind of a a right now fire kind of mentality. I need that fire right now, or I'm going to have problems. Um, so. I carry two different types. If you think about how important fire is and how it goes kind of across the gamut of the survival priorities and facilitates everything, it's, it's that important and to me it's the most important. With that said, the, the most reliable ignition source in the worst conditions are your open flame ignition sources. So if you're going to be redundant anywhere, be redundant on the thing that's most likely to save your life. And that's why I carry both the lighter and uh, windproof, stormproof matches. You know, the, the longest burning ones I can get. Because yes, I can rescue a lighter in probably 15 seconds. If you've taken our fire class, you'd, we teach you how to do it, we make you do it, we make you start a fire with it. It doesn't take that long, but you know, when seconds are counting and you're starting to use your, lose your, your cognitive ability and fine motor skills, man, it's nice to have a lighter, uh, a match that you can just strike and go. Super match is kind of like, I pack these in my kids' kits too. But what it is, is um, you can make these out of different size, but I like the Yuko matches. Uh, I did a review on them. I used them for about, uh, I'd say about two or three years before I did a review on them uh, and did kind of an extensive video. I tested it, kind of uh, applied scientific method type things, you know, and I basically took some broom sage uh, tender bundles and I stuck them in a creek in front of me and let them all soak for the same amount of time. And I had all three different sizes of the Yuko matches. You know, they, they call these the Titans, which is the biggest ones. And these are the ones I give my kids usually. Um, uh, because if, if I'm thinking about it, if my kid is starting an emergency fire, you know, at 12 or eight, or definitely not my daughters, they're two, two years old and like two weeks old. Uh, but when they get to that age, this is what I want in their kit. I want the best chance they can have. Uh, so with these, uh, it's, it's your, it's your emergency tinder and your ignition source all balled into one and it's waterproof. Uh, and that waterproofing, I use wax so that, you know, that is also a fuel. How I make it is I take four of those Titan matches or I take four of the, um, the Yuko stormproof or four of the Yuko survival matches, uh, the little guys, I bundle those together, take four of them. Then I take square cotton or you can use uh, any kind of cotton ball, doesn't matter. I dip that in liquid paraffin, which is lamp oil. Um, and that's kind of a wet fuel that's not gonna solidify. So I want my, my cotton soaked with that. Um, then from there, I'll take just a piece, uh, or a piece of uh, masking tape to cover the heads, to try to keep some of the wax off of that. It's not perfect, but it, it keeps some of it off, so I'm not having to mess with it to expose the striking surface. Uh, and then I'll dip the entire thing in melted paraffin, like a solid paraffin, but melted. Dip the whole thing both sides, you know, so that it's nice and uh, waterproof. 
and then I'll let that dry. Uh, normally to speed up the process, I'll put it in the uh, cling wrap, wrap it up real tight, and I'll throw it in the freezer for a while. Uh, just to solidify that wax again and keep everything where I want it. I did a test burn, two test burns on them, and it's, it's somewhere around 15 minutes. So it goes from all of your match accelerant basically shooting out like a, like a road flare. Um, and then once it burns down past that, it turns into a candle from here down. And it's just a nice slow little flame that licks, you know, so... The goal of this is to be able to scratch up, you know, a pile of, of really fine stuff that I know will evaporate quickly to get the water off and it'll dry out and catch on its own. And so, uh, by design, I could take all of this, you know, and it, even if it's soaking wet, and I could pop one of these and just angle it up in there and shoot that flame in there and then move it inside and let it act as a candle and that's going to dry, you know, all of that out and eventually it'll catch and then you have the chain reaction and you get your fire in an emergency. Normally I'll take the Yuko matches, they always come with extra strikers, and I'll take one of those and I'll put it on the outside. You said it acts kind of like a road flare out yeah, of that. Is absolutely. Like making little mini road flares? I don't know. That's a good question. It's something that you could do like that, kind of pop it, and you've got a long um, I'm sure that somebody's thought of it, uh, but I'm not sure, and a road flare actually works really well. Uh, I keep them in my vehicle kits, uh, not only the mark, but also, you know, uh, you can use it for a signal, you can use it to start your fire. Uh, so it's kind of one of them dual purpose items uh, that I really like. So that masking tape kind of keeps some of the wax off the head, but you still may have to scrape it to expose. But once you get one going, this thing's going. Uh, see how nice that is? Everybody see that? No, so I kept that wax off of there. Now, I wrap the whole thing in, I wrap it in cotton, and then I dip that whole thing in liquid paraffin because it's not going to solidify. So there's there's liquid fuel encased in this solid fuel on the outside. The first time I tested this, I tested it in my garage. Imagine my surprise. <laughs> and for the rest of this time, let's see if I can get it propped up so it doesn't... The rest of this time it'll just kind of go like a mat, or like a candle, I'm sorry. You said it goes probably about 15 minutes, you think? About 10 or 15, I, I think they're usually about 15. But, uh, I mean, it's, it's a lot better than a regular stormproof match, and I'm, instead of carrying a big canister of regular matches, I'm carrying one big match, because if, if I can, and the conditions are good, I'm going to try to use that lighter first. But, I mean, if, if I don't even have time to mess with that, and I want something quick, you know, because, I mean, you can't hold a lighter down uh, for, uh, for 15 minutes, you know, to dry out everything and get that reaction going. Um, but this is another reason why in my kits I carry candles. Uh, and that brings up another point that I could tell you about. Um, did some testing on, on candles, beeswax candles. Uh, I started carrying uh, your, your normal Bic lighter, it's in my pocket, but your normal Bic lighter, uh, you get something like uh, 300, one and a half second flicks with it is what they claim. It's something crazy like that, but it's, it's a lot, you know. One and a half seconds isn't enough for all the time, you know. So, three uh, beeswax birthday candles. I did a test on those. Those one beeswax birthday candle burned for over 20 minutes. So, when I'm talking about a lighter extender, you know, I'm using that birthday candle, just something that small. I can light that, save my resource, and that candle's going to burn for about 20 minutes. That little birthday candle. Um, just carrying three birthday candles is equivalent to carrying an extra lighter, you know, as far as time that you actually, you know, can plan on. Uh, so uh, having your having your lighter in kit, a lighter that's in my kit, I'll take three birthday candles and, and kind of put it with that. And that'll extend that lighter uh, as if I was carrying two and it's a lot less space. Uh, so yeah, these guys will go for, for quite a long time. Um, we're about halfway down as far as the candle action. And what's interesting about these two is once it's, even once it's done, you still have an ember, you know. So 
So if for some reason you didn't get it, you know, and you had some something something stashed, you still have a little ember to work with that you can blow. Um, so you know, that's the super match. I'm pretty sure I've uploaded this on our YouTube channel, how to make it. Um, I think it's on there. More impressive in person. Oh, did you see it on there? Yeah. Yeah, so I had this on my workbench, you know, which has got shelves that come up to it. So it's about this much space, you know, it's where I do all my live feeds and everything. There's like waxed canvas behind backdrop, you know, just for, it's like a little mini studio for live feeds. Uh, and then there's burlap, like covering up my shelves, you know, so you're not, you know, having to stare at all my junk. Um, and uh, I set this dude up, I fired it up right there. And you saw it like whoo, get going, it sounds like a jet engine going off, you know. And I'm like, I got nowhere to put this thing. So I sat it down and kind of propped it up, you know, and I'm just watching everything. I'm like, don't catch, you know, I've got burlap here and waxed. Actually, it might be an oil cloth tarp behind it. <laughs> like, next time, so the other video where I actually did uh, the further testing on it, it's actually like the garage doors open, you know, and it's like way out there close to uh, the edge of the garage. But uh, yeah. So even the, the, I've made them with the, the stormproof matches, they're smaller, kind of the midsize, which is what I normally carry uh, in my stuff uh, for, for packability reasons. Um, they burn for a really long time too, it works just as well. And even the little tiny survival matches, uh, which brings me back to something I skipped ahead on uh, in that Yuko matches review video that, that I did. I had all those in the water and I figured out that I needed about 15 seconds. Pulling that broom's edge out of the water and then shaking it off, you know, I think five times I did for the test. And then, you know, stacking it into a teepee and striking that, I think it was about 15 seconds is what I came up with you need, like minimum uh, to get it going. So I think those, the Yuko matches, the, the little ones might only be 12 seconds. Uh, and I think the Stormproof are about 15, which is adequate. Uh, and the Titans are normally about 25, I think, which is more than adequate, and, you know, so that's why my kids get gets those. So that thing will probably keep going and we can keep talking about other things. But I mean, that's, that's that thing's crazy, you know, and I'm, I'm carrying four matches, but this is my, my life defends on this. I need it right now. Like that's what I carry that for. Um, and it's compact so I can put it in this belt pouch and I'll put like a, you know, the larger, the rest of the Titan matches in the case with extra strikers, I'll put that in my backpack, you know, kind of back to that layering concept that we talked about. Uh, but that'll dry out some tinder and that'll get it going for sure so uh, play with them uh, they're a lot of fun and uh, I think it's a good way to really make a really effective match ridiculously effective uh, in my opinion so all I got for that the super match is still going unless you guys want to see just how long it goes it's like watching water boil yeah you can see like this stuff was soaked and it's it's only in the the proximity and it went up you guys familiar with the, the three way? It's not, I majored in biology, so I'm a scientist, and I think we have other scientists in the room, but uh, you guys familiar with the, the three ways that a fire heats us? Induction, convection, and radiation. Yep, and I, I'm not sure if we talked about it when we were talking about uh, shelters. I may have, I don't remember now. So conduction, uh, as far as when you're fire, using your fire as part of your shelter and creating that microclimate, um, you're trying to trap that heat, obviously. Uh, so those are the three ways that a fire actually heats. Uh, conduction, convection, radiation. So conduction occurs in a fire. It occurs at the point where the, the gaseous part of the fuel is actually ignited and the, the fuel that isn't ignited. Like that's the very point of conduction. You know, that's, that's a colder object touching a warmer object and the heat transfer. The heat gets transferred from higher to lower temperature along the temperature gradient. Um, so what does that do for us in our microclimate in our shelter? Not a thing, because that's, that's, that's its thing. It doesn't do anything for us. That, so uh, the second way is convection. Um, and the science behind that is, is you know, the, the convection always goes straight up by design. That's what it does by default. The only way that you can take advantage of convection for your microclimate is if you have something over top of that that catches it and redirects it. Uh, so if you have a fire out in front of your shelter, uh, your convection is going straight up. You know, all that convective heat is going straight up. It just, that's what it does. It has no choice unless there's an air current that changes it and bends it. So unless the wind is blowing it into your shelter, you're not getting anything from convection. So the majority of what we can take advantage of is the radiant heat. Um, 
and the radiant heat is what's going out in you know 360 well, actually probably 180 because it's not going through the ground it's actually getting soaked by the ground uh, and any biomass that you have it's soaking it up as well the advantage to biomass which brings me to my next point because i don't think we'll have time to actually build one and show you it uh, i was going to talk about fire walls uh, commonly kind of a misnomer but they commonly are called fire reflectors um, and in a way they do reflect there's two types of reflection there's specular reflection there's diffuse reflection like your walls uh, in your house like that eggshell you know when you turn that on uh, turn your light on it reflects that back to you if it didn't reflect then you wouldn't be able to see it because that's how we perceive uh, it's all you know a matter of, of reflect of, of reflected light uh, and wavelengths but anyway I don't want to go too far down the rabbit hole. Um, diffuse reflection is common with stone, uh, wood, with uh, surfaces that are not shiny. Specular reflection reflects it back at the exact same wavelength that it went out. You know, so it, that's why mirrors work, is because it's reflecting back the exact same wavelengths of light, and that's why you see it. So a shiny surface does reflect better, obviously, but diffuse reflection does happen, but at such a low extent uh, that it, it should never really, that's why I don't think it should ever be called a, a fire reflector, and I always call it a firewall. Even though there's a little bit of reflective heat, it's not much. It's really what you gain from a firewall is the biomass's ability to absorb the heat and then re-radiate it back to the environment as your environment cools. If that's hotter and the environment next to it is cooler, it'll pull that back out because your temperature is always going to constantly, constantly be trying to reach an equilibrium. So they're valuable in that. Uh, is the long, it, it, that's a long way of saying they're valuable in that. Uh, that's the short version. Uh, so I was going to show you how to do one, but uh, we're starting to run short on time. There's other more important things. Uh, but like that lean-to shelter, if you put a, a fire reflector, fire wall, uh, maybe two paces out and then put a long fire like a, a rake of Alkia or a long fire something that goes the full length of that shelter you know kind of in midway between uh, you'd have something you know pretty good I think it'd be pretty cozy uh, in that shelter so with the reflector walls um, is there also something based on color not just the surface sheen as in like a white object versus a black object yes yeah but it's it's not going to be something that, yeah, the, the, the diffuse, the diffuse reflection you're going to get from natural materials is so minuscule that it's, it's hardly noticeable. Like if you tried to measure it, uh, with a thermometer, it'd be pretty difficult. Um, but it does have value in that it heats up and releases that back to the environment slowly. Uh, but thinking along the lines of like a split log instead of the dark bark on the outside absorbing it if you could split it and get the white inside if that would actually I think it would benefit. yeah I think it would I mean it makes sense because you know, snow does that it reflects light differently uh, and more intensely uh, and obviously shiny objects do as well so I would think it would yeah conduction doesn't do anything for us convection doesn't do anything for us unless we have like we talked about I think on when we built the lean-to where we had that awning kind of going over if that if your convective heat goes straight up and hits that, it can bend it down and get it back into your cir circulate into your shelter. So that can help you. You can take advantage of that. Uh, but the main thing we're capturing is is the radiant heat um, from your fire. Yeah. Any other questions? Not that you asked that one. So if those little cheap space blankets, if we just put that up mm -hmm. in between a pole, that, that would be a true reflection. That's a true no specular bio. reflection. Uh, Have you ever it's, actually, everything is, other than a mirror or uh, a mirrored surface, a polished surface, is, is a mixture of both. But that's mo it would be more specular for sure, and they work great for that. Uh, that's another thing that's a value of one of those space blankets is like that lean-to would be a perfect example. You can tie it up on the inside, and man, that radiant heat is going to hit it and and you're going to feel it and like alan said uh the other day you were you want to talk about what you said the other day about the the space blankets yeah uh you know in, in lieu of a shelter if you have to do it hastily you make your if you just kind of drape the thing around you and, and kind of leave it semi-circle shape you, you'll feel an instant mm -hmm. rush of heat i mean it's almost like you just got put in a furnace mm -hmm. And, and that's a, that's a way that you can warm yourself really quick. And those things occupy very little space. You can keep it in your pocket. That's one way to maximize your fire if you, in the absence of shelter.